Hi, this is Megan Longoria. And today we're going to talk about gradient coloring on your Power BI charts and why that might pose some accessibility issues. And we'll go over a couple ways we could fix that. Do you make charts like this? If you do, you're not alone. In the Power BI docs, they have very similar charts showing you how you can use conditional formatting to set a gradient color scheme across your bars. Now, the problem with this is that it doesn't meet accessibility standards for color contrast. So if you follow this design, you're making an inaccessible data visualization. Why is it inaccessible? Well, we want important parts of our visual to stand out from the background. When we use gradient color contrast, the scale we're using, this light blue to medium blue, usually doesn't have sufficient contrast from the background. How do we know what's sufficient? We can follow WCAG, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, and see that the preferred contrast ratio for non-text, meaning graphical or geometrical objects, is three to one. If you have a handy tool like the Accessibility Insights for Windows app, you can measure this. So I'm going to sample this chart in Docs, and we'll start at the darkest color blue compared to the white background. That's some pretty good accessibility. Our contrast ratio is over four. Let's go to the middle. Not so good, 1.5. And the very last one is just under 1.2. So we're not meeting our color contrast goals. You'll see the same thing here. I used the default theme and allowed it to use the default gradient coloring there. Same thing. So this is 3.3. The bottom one is 1.17. Not great. People who have low vision, people who have glaucoma, people who are just tired of staring at their screen for multiple hours, may have a hard time, especially for these really short bars, actually distinguishing the bar from its background. So what can we do about that? There's a couple things. And the first thing I want to ask you is why are you doing gradient coloring? There are multiple ways to encode information in our visuals. For instance, a bar chart uses length to tell us about a quantitative amount. So we know that the sales revenue on touring bikes is higher than road bikes because the bar is longer. If we're doing this gradient coloring, I have to ask why. Why would you do this? When you use the same measure to do your gradient coloring as the bars, that's called double encoding, meaning we used two different channels or properties to convey the same message. Double encoding isn't inherently bad, but it is something to consider whether that second encoding is helpful to your audience or more distracting. In this case, we didn't even explain what the colors mean. We just have to assume that the colors correspond with the bars because that's what we see. And there's no other item in the tooltip, so nothing helpful there. We're stuck with a double encoded, but still inaccessible visual. So my first tip is if you don't need the gradient coloring because it doesn't add any information, you were just doing it because it looked cool, take it off. If you have to keep it on there, uh, maybe the person this report is for absolutely loves it and refuses to have it be removed, you can still fix your color contrast. Because late last year, we got the ability to add borders around our bars in the core bar chart visual. This visual is 
the stacked bar chart. Nothing special about it. I still have the gradient. So if we go to bars, we look at our color. I left the gradient as it is on the first one, but I came down here and I enabled the border. And I chose, because I have a light background and some fairly light bar colors, I chose a not entirely black, but a dark, dark gray color. I think it was probably this one. For those interested in the hex value, there you go, all threes. And that changes our game. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna measure, let's, since we already have white there, Here's our border color compared to white, and it's got a great contrast ratio. Now let's compare our border color to one of the light blues. Still a great contrast ratio. And if we go to that darkest color, it's still above three. So we've solved our color contrast problem here by simply adding borders. Now again, in this case, I don't need to double encode this information. I may want to completely remove that. And in that case, I can measure my bar color from the background. And that regular blue color is sufficient and doesn't require a border, so I could turn it back off and we'd be fine. So let's talk about what happens if we're not double encoding? We're actually encoding two different metrics. So here we have the same sales by category, but you'll notice the colors don't correspond with the length of the bar anymore. They actually correspond with order quantity. So the range is shown from 22 being the lightest color to 252 being the darkest. This is interesting because you can tell now that some items are just really expensive and we only sold a few of them. Other items we just sold a lot of, they're not particularly expensive. Now I could see that even better if I added in my tooltips, but I don't want people to have to hover over each individual thing to get that. So I'm encoding two different metrics here. Sometimes this is useful, sometimes it's not. Again, it depends on the context and the audience, but I could probably make a better case for the gradient color encoding here than I could in the first one because I'm providing additional information. So again, we have the exact same problem here, and we have the same solution. In this case, I don't wanna get rid of the gradient color encoding. Maybe I can make a case for that extra information being useful all within one chart, and I can still add my border back to it and get the good color contrast. So again, my color contrast, I'm measuring the background to the border and then the border to the internal color. And I'm trying to get it to all be above three. So we can, again, once we've got this set up, test it. And we know our background color. If you can hover over that tiny little thing and get the right color, more power to you, but I went into the values and know that it's this dark gray color and my ratio is 3.7, so I'm all good there. And everything else is lighter, so it has an even better or greater color contrast ratio. There is such a thing as too much color contrast. The highest color contrast is 21 to one. Uh, that would be black on white. If everything were like that, it, it would feel very stark. So you'll notice 
especially in my work, but lots of other people's, I use a lot of off whites and not quite black for backgrounds and borders. In this case, I did use an all white background uh, because that's very common. And that's the default in Power BI. So I hope this helps you go from something maybe not quite accessible with a two second change to help it meet WCAG color contrast guidelines. Thanks so much for watching.